Hi, my name is Michael Ostroff, and I'm a PhD physics student at FAU. Um, one of my hobbies is um, playing around with fractals, essentially, um, and a couple of years ago I discovered an, a new fractal phenomenon, which I refer to as fractal flow. In order to describe it, I need to first describe what um, monobot sets are and what Julia sets are. So, if you take a um, some random like complex function, like some polynomial thing, and you apply it over and over and over again, then uh, for like different starting values, um, oh, and also let's say this function also has like a set of parameters like called c. Um, if you keep applying this over and over again, eventually that point, like those points, are either going to diverge to complex infinity or they're going to stay constrained, and you can give this a sort of iteration count essentially and you can see how this iteration count like changes for the entire like domain as you vary those parameters c. What I'm describing is essentially how like the Mandelbrot set and like Julia sets work. So the Julia set is typically um it's essentially a plot of like the iteration count of when like this escapes to infinity essentially or passes some like barrier and um, you'll notice that this um, Julia set it's either going to be like this dust or it's going to be connected well there's an in-between state but I digress um, and if it's um, disconnected like a dust then that means it's out its values um, its parameter c they're outside of what's known as the Mandelbrot set, but if it's connected, it's inside the Mandelbrot set. Um, and like the more, the closer it is to the edge of the Mandelbrot set, the more intricate like the structure of the like, corresponding Julia set is. So if you shift around the like parameter C just like a little bit, you'll notice that the um, like the iteration counts for the Julia set. Um, they actually shift around ever so slightly. I I wanted to go and quantify this um, movement, this f flow of the fractal, and I created a mathematical formula for it. And it turns out that this um, flow, this like fractal flow, is actually a complex um, like field essentially. Um, it's a complex meromorphic function composed of essentially infinite um, poles and zeros of like the complex function. And because it is like a complex function um, and a one-dimensional complex function, we can actually plot it on the complex plane. And if you were to do so, you get a very beautiful and like colorful image and it just looks amazing in my opinion. Um, but these colors like the hue essentially tells you which like the direction you'd be moving in the complex plane and the whiteness tells you the intensity of that movement where white is essentially complex infinity and if it's highly saturated then that means it's like not moving much whatsoever um red means it's moving in the positive real direction uh, um, lime means it's moving in the positive imaginary direction sand means it's moving in the negative um, um, real direction and violet purple means it's moving in the negative imaginary direction. If you, I've uploaded like a video of um, fractal flow on my YouTube channel, Perpetual Science, um, and you can see how like the if the as value of C moves around the Mandelbrot set, um, the Julia set shifts around, and how this like movement corresponds to, like the fractal flow. So. I'm not entirely sure how much of a like usage this um, has. Oh yeah, I should explain a bit more. What I'm technically doing with the fractal flow is I'm calculating like essentially um, what z zero your like the initial like starting point, how much it needs to change as c changes in order for the infinite iteration of the fractal or, or of the like function like. Um, z squared plus c like or whatever it is um because you can do different stuff as i've shown in my blog post um basically you're calculating how much z zero needs to be changing like what rate of change needs to be in order for z infinity to stay constant so um with like the fractal flow if you're uh like the normal like the cases I've like presented so far in my blog and on my YouTube channel, 
they basically have only one parameter and they're one dimensional so like they're outputting only one number but if you you can actually uh, give them way more than one parameter and you can also make them higher dimensional like so you can have like mo instead of having like a normal mondo um, set you can have like a mondo bulb thing which might be like three dimensional or 80 dimensional or something and these like this um these like functions that you're applying over and over again these are kind of similar to recursive neural networks in a sense because with those you're basically taking the output and applying like the function over and over and over again like the neural network our brains are actually recurrent neural networks and they operate on what's known as the edge of chaos essentially um computations at the edge of chaos are like a lot more intricate um, whereas computations away from like the edge of chaos are a lot more simple essentially and it's thought that if you had like made a neural network operate at the edge of chaos then it would be like more efficient and powerful than one operating far away from it so um one thing you can do is like the fractal flow is let's say you have like a point on the fractal and you want like that like part of the fractal flow to you want the fractal to flow at a different at that point in a certain direction you can actually compute what the like what c zero or i mean what c dot needs to be in order for the fractal flow to have that value at that given point however if you have a lot of different parameters and higher dimensions you could actually specify what you want the fractal flow to be at several different points well at least in theory um i haven't fully tested this out but you could, like you should, I believe, be able to specify like where you want different parts of the fractal to move, such as maybe like parts which are near the Julia set. And you could maybe cause evolve, like have those evolve to move towards certain points. And this should, I think, allow you to essentially sculpt the Julia set into like whatever shapes that you want. And if you the calculations your neural network is going to be performing are near those like um locations then you're essentially having those computations happening like at the like edge of chaos so this fractal flow might actually be useful for um, training like neural networks in a completely new way um which um, causes them to operate at the edge of chaos which could make them a lot more powerful I don't know if this is actually the case though. I have not done this yet. So um, the, like take it was like a couple of grams of salt, I suppose. I'm gonna be researching like the complex systems behavior of like fractal flow and um, fractals in general. Um, so I'll probably find more stuff. So again, if you wanna know more about like fractal flow, um, you can check out my blog post on fractal flow. You, if you want to look at how fractals go and if you want to see an example of fractal flows your eyes, watch the video I uploaded on my Perpetual Science YouTube channel. Um, and that is essentially it. Um, next time I'm on, I believe I will be talking about wormholes a bit more. Uh, have a good day. Thank you and goodbye.